The Bible says that in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important that we be aware of what Satan's doing in our world so that we don't fall prey into his evil system. There's one thing concerning about the Antichrist, which I taught several times, but we're going to look through these verses together, and then we can reconfirm these passages. Now, there is something that's pretty interesting concerning about how the Antichrist is going to persecute God's people. And what he wants to do is that he wants to kill you. That is Satan's ultimate goal. Doesn't matter who you are, Satan, what he wants is that you die. He wants to kill you. So he wants to kill you, end your life, because the Bible says he's a murderer from the beginning. Now in the tribulation, there is something interesting to think about is how is he going to kill, how is he going to kill God's people? How is, is he going to carry out the execution and persecution? I'm going to cover three brands of religion that are popular around the world. And this is obviously what the Antichrist will use. They are Catholicism, Islam, and Judaism. And by the way, they're the three top world religions anyways. So let's look at the three things how Satan's going to use this. First of all, look at Daniel chapter 11. And then I want you to read verse 37. Notice that he will be a Jew. Neither shall he regard the God of, notice the true God, right? Of his what? Father. So his generations. Nor the desire of woman, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. So notice that he will be Jewish by ethnicity. And you'll also notice that he's going to be a Syrian Jew as well. You might say, why is that, Pastor? Because who he is is you're going to find out at Rome, uh, Daniel chapter 11 and verse uh, 25. He shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south. So this Antichrist is against the king of the south. If you read verses 1 all the way to 24, 25, it's the king of the north and the king of the south conflict. The king of the north, you're going to find. So then the Antichrist is the king of the north then. Who is the south? Who is the north? I already gave a teaching on that. If you read Daniel chapter 11 all the way from verses 1 through 25, the locations are undoubtedly as fulfilled by Daniel's prophecy already. It's Syria and then Egypt. So then Syria would be more of the northern location. Egypt is the south. So thus we know the Antichrist, he will be from the location of Syria. So he is a Syrian Jew. We always mention that. So think about this. The, the religions that are most popular in those two locations are Islam as well as Judaism. So that's why we believe that these two religions can follow along because of its ethnicity. He's a Syrian and a Jew together. Now, another thing concerning about the Antichrist is that because he's a Syrian Jew, it makes you wonder how the death penalty would be carried out. Now, the interesting thing is that concerning about the Noahide laws. Have you ever heard of that before? So he is a Syrian Jew. Concerning Noahide laws, that can go with the Jewish system right here. Noahide laws, what they are is that basically there are several laws that were supposedly given to Gentiles who want to follow the Jewish system. So they're not given Moses' law, instead they're given Noah's law, so to speak. Now, the Noahide laws, I'll mention it a little bit more later on, but it's interesting how many presidents who were part of the uh, New World Order system, and they actually said New World Order word for word, yeah. they would sign these uh, Noahide law stuff, actually, from the Jewish rabbis who proposed it. But this is very interesting in one of their laws concerning about the Noahide laws here. Sanhedrin 56a, what is the death penalty for breaking this? The inclusion of heathens to whom blasphemy is prohibited, just as to Israelites, and they are executed by decapitation. For every death penalty decreed for the sons of Noah is only by decapitation. Now is the prohibi prohibition of blasphemy to heathens deduced from this verse? But it is deduced, deduced from another, the Lord referring to the blessing of the divine name, 
The phrase, any man, is necessary only as teaching the inclusion of substitutes of God's name. Now, we believe that God's name is Jesus, amen? The Jews do not believe Jesus is the Messiah. So that would be considered blasphemy to them, and then the penalty can be decapitation right here. But who would also teach this? Quran chapter 8, verse 12. You know what Islam teaches? Remember, when your Lord inspired the angels... Oh, by the way, that was Sanhedrin 56a for the, the passage that I read. San, Sanhedrin 56a. Now here's Quran, chapter 8, verse 12. Remember, when your Lord inspired the angels, I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. Right? If you don't believe the system then with, the, with Islam, then what? Therefore, strike off their heads... And strike off every fingertip of them. Decapitation. Here's the Hadith and Sirah. And one of them is Ibn Ishaq Hisham 990. Quote, Cutting off someone's head while shouting Allahu Akbar is not a perversion of Islam, but a tradition of Islam that began with Muhammad. Yeah. In this passage, a companion recounts an ep episode in which he staged a surprised ambush on settlement, I leaped upon him and cut off his head and ran in the direction of the camp shouting, Allah Akbar, and my two companions did likewise. Oh, you, oh this is some kind of Western Christianity, terrorist thinking, distorting the religion of Islam. I'm reading out of Islam Muslim sources, and the Hadith is the second most holy writing out of Islam. And I even quoted their most holy writing, the Quran. What are you going to do about that? So notice right here, what they could do is abiding by, if they don't follow the system of Islam. But how are you going to reconcile these two together? Very simple. All you have to do is Daniel chapter 9, where the Antichrist makes a covenant and an agreement. And in this covenant and an agreement, which everyone is wishing for one day, right? When will this Palestinian-Israel conflict be uh, resolved, all you have to do is have some covenant where both sides can coincide each other. That's why one world religion is absolutely necessary. That's why the liberal thinking of intolerance and, and uh, being anti-dogmatic, not looking literally at the doctrinal statements, but metaphorically, scholastically speaking, that interpretation, Alexandrian interpretation, all of it coincide together for a one world religion to happen. Does this start to make sense, or was that a little deep for you? Okay. Not, not only that, so Revelation chapter 20 talks about the tribulation saints. What are they? Beheaded. Beheaded. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. That's how the Antichrist killed them, is by beheading them. That's what you're going to find in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Now, Revelation chapter 13 is interesting, especially if you compare that with Daniel. The Antichrist is a leopard, and that is referring to America. Revelation chapter 13 right here, notice that the Bible says at verse 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. See that? And that is the Antichrist at verse 4. He is given power. Now, what's so interesting about the Antichrist, he's likened to a leper. If you compare that with the book of Daniel, and you read Daniel from chapter 7 all the way down to chapter 12, I'm not going to get into that, but if you're interested, watch my video, Seven-Headed Dragon and Ten-Horned Antichrist. That's my video, Seven-Headed Dragon, Ten-Horned Antichrist. Trust me, that's a really good video. You'll enjoy that. If you watch that video, I explain to you why the America has to be the leopard. So I'm not going to do it here. But uh, here's a short version, which is one thing to think about. The leopard, he has all three nationalities according to sociology. Sociology teaches, now they're changing it now because they don't like anything stereotypical now. They're trying to make it, they're trying to put rate, race and color blindness more and more and more. But basically there are three things according to sociology 101, which I study, believe it or not. It's the mongoloid, caucasian, and negroid. That's sociology 101. They admit that. All races, nationalities, etc. But guess what? These three uh, races, 
and colors match up with the leopard. A black spot and then a white belly and a yellow body right there. Shows integration right here. But integration is definitely, the melting pot is definitely proven if you keep reading verse 4, a bear and lion. See, what is the nation that is literally the number one target for a melting pot of different nations' nationalities? America. But watch my other video. That'll convince it more, uh, that'll explain it more convincingly. Okay, so this is America right here. So America, will they support this punishment system? Actually, this was proposed. So this is not officially in law, but this was actually brought up before and proposed. Georgia House of Representatives, 1995 to 1996 sessions, HB 1274, guillotine provisions, okay? Quote, to amend uh, Article 2 of Chapter 10 of Title 17 of the official, uh, let's see right here, this is a lot of stuff, I'm going to skip down right over here. Okay, Section 1, 1 1-8, the General Assembly finds that while prisoners condemned to 1-9, Death may wish to donate one or more of their organs for 1-10 transplant. Any such desire is thwarted by the fact that 1-11 electrocution makes all such organs unsuitable for 1-12 transplant. The intent of the General Assembly in enacting, I'll just keep reading, this legislation is to provide for a method of ex execution which is compatible with the donation of organs by a condemned prisoner. Now notice right here, what they want to do is that they want to retain all the organs for something important. So electrocution would get rid of all of that. In the tribulation, aren't they treasuring different people's organs where they're feasting on the bodies of tribulation saints? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Watch human sacrifices of the Antichrist. I'm not going to mention that. Watch human sacrifices of the Antichrist. Wow. Here's their act. Code of Georgia annotated relating to the death penalty generally so as to provide a statement of legislative policy to provide for death by guillotine to provide for applicability to repeal conflicting laws and for other purposes. How about that? They're going to provide the machinery to cut off your head right here. Not, on, not only that, which is very interesting, a person who was the ex-FBI head of Los Angeles, Ted Gunderson, he claimed that there were 30,000 of these guillotines and 1,000 internment camps. So this was a person who was a former FBI head of Los Angeles. So you'll notice right here that America also has this pre prepared. Here's ICD 9E978, quote, All executions performed at the behest of the judiciary or ruling authority. So see if... so when the judicial body wants to provide the death penalty or the execution. It's very interesting what these executions include. Asphyxiation by gas, beheading, decapitation by guillotine, capital punishment, electrocution, hanging, poisoning, shooting, other specified means. Why do they have to include beheading right here? Very interesting. So America can join the boat right here. So America can join the boat concerning about beheading. So you lose your head. Who is the head of the body, as the Bible says? Jesus Christ. Satan has a great disdain for some reason against the head. You know why? Because the Bible says that Jesus will bruise the head of the serpent. There's some infatuation here from Satan. Was that too deep for you? Look at Romans chapter 16, Genesis chapter 3. Is that too deep for you? What about Catholicism, Pastor? It doesn't mention it right here. Well, before I mention Catholicism, this is going to be very interesting. Okay, concerning about Judaism, why is it that we believe that the Jews are going to be the good guys at the end of the tribulation despite of that covenant? You know why? Because the Antichrist, he's going to break that covenant, the Bible says right here. So there you go. There goes off that reconciliation. And what the Antichrist is going to do, he's going to take those Jews and put them into that death penalty. You know why? Because Noahide laws, as the Jews taught right here, it can be used one system for the Antichrist, but the Antichrist can find a different way around it. How will he do that? Because the Jews believe that blasphemy against God is uh, penalized under Noahide laws right here. The Antichrist 
The Bible says, Revelation 13, he spoke blasphemy against the God of heaven. Why? Because he makes an image. And Jews do not believe in images. Islam, Catholics, the world religions, they'll have that one, but not the Jews. And they'll go, whoa, we didn't sign up for this right here. And then that's why the Antichrist finally has an excuse. Now I got you. That's the goal of the Jewish bankers, Jewish elites, Rothschilds, underneath the one world government system is to betray and trick the Jewish people right here. Like Judas Iscariot who betrayed his fellow Jews, his Jewish Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And God Almighty, he's going to set those Jews straight when he sends down Moses and Elijah. That's why be careful when you go against the Jewish people. When you get deep into this conspiracy stuff, it's going to build up a more anti-Semite mentality and you miss a bigger goal where your eyes should be set upon the real enemy. These are God's chosen people that the Lord's going to use. These are just poor people who've been victimized and became lackeys of his wicked system. Better keep that in mind. But let's talk about Catholicism, and then let's call it a night. Catholicism right here, what's so interesting about them, you know, they, don't, they may not have a death penalty by beheading, even though in the Dark Ages there was some of that, but it's not really big. It's burning at the stake, you'll notice more and more. So if it's not penalizing the, or cursing the head, what are they going to be known for? Blessing the head. Because you either lose your head or you take the mark. What is it in the Catholic Church that they put on your forehead? A mark. Follow this church right here or have the Muslim cut off your head. How about that? That shows the Catholic Church was always that queen evil system at the top, the mother of the elite kings of the earth, the elite system. See, they're the ones on top, but they're in a more secret form. They want their lackeys to take care of the bloody mess and the blame. But they themselves, no, we're not. We're Christians like you. We suffer persecution like you. That's the wickedness of this evil system. And that cap and that. Catholic Antichrist, even though he's Syrian Jew, his religion is Catholicism. And then he'll put that mark on the forehead. If you reject that, then he's going to have these people cut off your head right here. And not only that, those Jews will be betrayed, and then these guys will be the ones able to hunt them down. How about that? Their death penalty was burning at the stake, right? So what do you think God does with the with the church at the end. He burns her to the ground, just like, he bur just like she burned many of God's martyrs throughout not just the tribulation, but throughout the church age, yeah. thousands of years. Yeah. God gets his justice, his Amen. judgment. Amen. 